Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following me as I explore the wide world of pens. And we see before us a Moon Man pen. In that new logo, at least I'm calling it a new logo and a new way of showing Moon Man, maybe to avoid any trademark infringement. We have two labels on the box. This is the first one. And there's the second one with a nice uh, inventory barcode on it. This is reminiscent of, you know, maybe the box that they used to use before, which was reminiscent of Lamy, but this one's a little bit more substantial, but still got a little bit beat up. But has that same, you know, cardboard insert that holds the pen nicely inside the box and we'll see what they're calling a titanium pen and I have no reason to either confirm nor deny it is made out of titanium I guess it is but the tests that I found are all destructive and I'm not worth destroying the pen just to determine what metal it's made out of it does have the look of titanium and we'll compare to some other titanium pens a little bit later on. The clip is strongly spring-loaded and I find that to be detracting. That shiny chrome clip with that very nice finish on the titanium. I'd love if that clip was the same color as the pen and there's a nice engraving. There's that Moon Man on two lines but nothing identifying the model the cap pops off and it's held on very securely and we'll see a nice metal section kind of like I did uh, with the uh, 601 and a very nice design with those little fingers that are spring loaded the cap just has a substantial feel to it. The whole pen has a nice quality feel to it. A nice bit of weight to it. And as we would expect, it fits fine in the hand. You know, I can deal with these sections. I usually hold it about there, so the diameter is pretty nice. And as you could expect from the design, it does post very deeply, very securely, and you feel the weight of that cap. And it's a cartridge converter, and we'll see another interesting feature. It takes a lot of turns to get that barrel off, which is what you would expect. And there's a nice O-ring in there, a lot of nice fine threads. We'll see uh, a you know, decent converter. It did have an insert in there, but I took it out. You'll see it later on in the video. And a nice big opening, which I really think is good to facilitate a nice flow. You don't want anything restricting flow of ink between the converter and the nib. And that just feels good when you do those last few turns and that rubber o-ring kicks in. So we'll look at the pen and pieces, talk a little bit more about the design, compare it to some titanium pens, show you how I flush the nib out, find a suitable ink, and see how that nib writes. So this is as far as I'm going to disassemble the pen. I did take the converter apart because it had this insert in the converter. It's not a spring, it's just a lump of metal. I don't think it serves any purpose. I've not found any of these devices to really dis, you know, keep the ink flow towards the nib. And that converter has a huge opening in it, which I think is a great idea. If we look at the section, we'll see inside a uh, nice design. So this converter fits very snugly and very securely and you have a huge ink flow to the converter and to the nib. I have no desire to try to take that hood off the nib. You know, it's done very well now. It's been flushed, and we'll show you the flushing afterwards. 
I'm going to look inside the cap to show you what's there. So now we're in dark mode, just a little bit of diffuse sunlight coming in. So the LED is going to work well. And if we look inside the cap, we'll see a plastic liner. But then there seems to be some type of brass attachment at the top. It looks like uh, you might be able to use a slotted screwdriver to remove it, but that's not what I'm going to do. And that's how the finials held in place. In the Parker 45s and etc., even starting with the dual fold, the top finial would unscrew, and that's how you access the clip and the inside of the cap. But we're not going to do that with this pen. I flush every pen that I get. I have a couple bulb syringes. This one fits well onto the section. And that flow is excellent. So I get a feel for the flow of a pen by doing this flushing. The bulb draws up this soapy liquid very quickly and expels it quickly. So to me, this prepares the nib and the feed, removes any impurities that may be there. And I'll do a flush with water before I do any inking. So here are two pens that are made of solid titanium, an Enzo PMO and a Namisu Nova. And is it in the color family? Yes. Does it have the kind of tactile feel of titanium? Yes. Colors all a little bit different, but that's influenced by the finish. This one's like a tumbled finish. This one's a polished finish. And this is kind of in between those two. So let's compare it to some other metal pens of similar design. So I thought this would make a good grouping. We have two of the Wingsung 601s. Gold trim, chrome trim, the Moon Man, and then two Parker 45s, one with gold trim and one with chrome trim. The color is not that much different. This color actually looks pretty close to this color, which is a brushed stainless steel, but it feels different. I can't really explain it. But this is all classic designs. These two have that uh, great pump filler, which works extremely well, holds a lot of ink. And these have uh, cartridge converter designs. Yeah, they got a little black plug at the end of the 45s, a little bit different finial at the top. And all of them have slightly different traits, different aero clips. At least the Moon Man has a more modernistically styled clip. I thought it'd be good to show these posted. These all have fully hooded nibs, and I would call these semi-hooded nibs. I don't know whether you can see it or not, but a classic uh, problem with some of these uh, vintage 45s is distortion in the section. It doesn't really interfere with the writing of the pen, but it certainly, you know, doesn't um, look as attractive as there wasn't any distortion there. All of these post very nicely. The balance held, holds up good. So all in all, I would say that they're definitely nice pens to have. I certainly enjoy them. I would say right now, this 601 is my favorite because of the nib and the way it lays down ink. This is a good second. The 45s are not inked up. So no matter what I did, that's as full as I could get the converter. I went up and down four times. I felt it pumped out air. I had the ink way up on the section, so it was pulling up like it should. So maybe that's one of the downsides of this type of design is it's hard to fill the converter all the way. I toyed with inks, but I settled on this one. I wanted a nice dense ink, a nice saturated ink with good flow. So this one is what went into the pen. It's a little bit of sheen to it. Let's see how it writes. So now we're at that all important, how does it write portion of the video review. So overall, the 
pen feels substantial, the pen feels well made. That cap just uh, really has a quality feel to it when you cap it and uncap it. The pen is weighted nicely, feels good in the hand. We'll give you those section diameters. So I start here down at the bottom, I measure here at the top, and I give you that total distance, which is I think 35 millimeters, quite a good distance. We'll give you the weights of the pen. As I uh, discussed, it does post and it does change the balance. It's certainly a pen you could write with posted, and it does post securely and well. So why do I have this pen? Is uh, being a metallurgist, titanium, something unique, had a nice look to it. But I think it's expensive. I'm not saying it's not worth the price, which is around 60 US dollars. Here's some that I found searching eBay. There's a, a variation in price, and I also found there's a gold nib model. I certainly wouldn't buy a gold nib and a hooded pen like this because, you know, I have gold Parker 51s and 45s and I, I, gold and steel and osmium. All of them write well. You're not going to get any flex. And a lot of the appeal of a gold nib is seeing that big gold nib with some ornate design on it. And you're not going to see that when the nib is hooded like this. You know, originally vintage pens were all mostly gold nibs. There were a few steel nibs, but those nibs did not survive. They didn't really have good stainless steel back in those days. So if you wanted a pen to last more than, you know, a month or two, you needed a gold nib. And gold was $35 an ounce back then. It was government controlled. Not like it's, I don't know, close to 2000 an ounce now. So gold is a significant cost in today's market. But they make steel nibs, stainless steel nibs, that I think write extremely well. And I think this is one of them. So let's put nib to paper and see how that Birmingham ink works in this pen. I should have been calling this a titanium alloy pen. Is that's what uh, the Chinese labels on the box refer to it as. This is a drawn tube, at least in my view. The end caps are probably formed. So it's uh, a titanium alloy that is somewhat malleable. Titanium is known for very, very good corrosion resistance. They use it for dental implants, medical implants, aircraft parts, because it's, you know, its strength to weight ratio is very, very high. So overall, it writes well. It's smooth with some feedback. If you're on a smoother paper like Clairefontaine, Rhodia, or Tomo River, which I've used with this nib, it, it feels much smoother than it does on this Fabriano paper. But I like the Fabriano paper because it does have some texture to it. So I would generally do a little smoothing on this nib. It writes on the dry side, but most hooded nibs in this design are fairly dry writers, but the color looks good, and it, the ink, the Birmingham ink, uh, works well. I'm happy with it. So let's rate this pen. You know, one of the things about a hooded nib is you got to make certain you're orientated because it's not easy sometimes to see where that position of the nib is. We're going to give it an 8.2.
it just gets one check because it's made out of titanium, but it's not enough to raise it higher than an 8.2 in my opinion. It is very well made. I like the way the cap stays on and how they designed this uh, whole situation. One thing I like about the auction is here's a picture of the pen completely disassembled, which saves me the effort of trying to do it. You can see how the cap is put together. You can see that ink collector, which was originally used in the Parker 51, which most hooded nibs now use that same design of an ink collector, which makes you have very consistent flow, makes it a great everyday writer, makes it, you know, pop off the cap and write with it. So if that's something you're interested in, you know, certainly you could do much worse than this pen. But for one third the price, you could get a, <clears throat> a 601 and have an equally good writing experience. And you can get one mostly made out of metal. So there's a lot of options. And to me, the value of this pen just isn't there for me. So I mentioned smoothing the nib. So I did that. So I used my nail board coarse a little bit medium and then some fine doing a whole bunch of things rotating the nib a little bit and now this nib is a wow hooded nib it's still not wetter but it is much smoother which i think you can hear so, I have a comment. I haven't met a nib yet that hasn't benefited from a little smoothing. So, thank you very much for watching. You know, hopefully I've showed you a pen that if you were interested in, you may now be able to decide whether it's something you'd want to invest your hard-earned money in. The section does feel good. It's not slippery at all, which I guess is another attribute to the way they finished that uh, titanium. And my other titanium pens are also uh, good to grip, better than uh, stainless steel and certainly better than some of those chrome metal sections they put on some pens that are somewhat expensive. I hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens, enjoying putting ink on paper, just enjoying everything you do. That's what I try to do. That's one of my goals. We've reached the end of this video, and we're going to say bye. I have a C3 in my possession, so that will be the next video. Many people have asked about it.